Hello, everyone, and welcome to Western Conference Wednesday. The Predators are down and out without their starting goaltender for the remainder of the season, and the LA Kings have surprisingly clinched a playoff spot. All that on today's episode of Locked On NHL. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm Jess Belmosto, and today I am joined by another Locked On NHL podcast host, but not my usual Western Conference Wednesday partner in crime. Gil, how are you doing today? I am good, Jess. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I'm very glad uh, that you jumped on and are <laughs> available to chat today. Um, so how about those Los Angeles Kings? Yeah, uh, clinching a playoff berth. And I, I mean... I thought this was a team sort of headed in the right direction, but I think most experts said they were probably a year away. And one thing I love about the Kings is the mixture they have of established, experienced players and young up-and-coming players. It's it's a nice mix in that locker room, and I think it served them well this year. Absolutely. I, um, I was very surprised at their success this season. I know to start the season, it was kind of Anaheim and LA kind of both had their, um, you know, hot start to the season and everybody was wondering which one was more sustainable uh, to, you know, hold throughout the rest of the season. And to no surprise, I, I think everybody picked LA just because of that veteran experience and their established players. But to see them, win 43 games this year, I think in itself is a huge success. Um, you know, they were still kind of, they're still in that retool rebuilding phase, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy for their fans that they're ahead of the curve in that, uh, in, in their little rebuild timeline. Yeah, me too. And and I think that the real question is, will Jonathan Quick give us the keys to the DeLorean? Because he went back in time about five years and really picked up his game this year. And all joking aside, I think being healthy is a big reason for the turnaround. But you don't expect a goalie at his stage of his career to have as big of a bounce back year as he has. And it's been one of the keys to their success. Absolutely. And it's it's nice to see uh, for, you know, sake of nostalgia and just kind of, you know, unfortunately, like this is my first experience of like this wave of uh, hockey players retiring that I grew up watching. So I'm kind of like, oh, no, this means I'm getting older, too. But I, I have to give Jonathan Quick a lot of credit because I think a lot of people wrote him off. And have kind of just said, you know, like, it's, it's time to move on without really saying it's time to move on. But I, I don't know. Uh, do you have, I, okay. I think that them making the playoffs in itself is a success that, and it doesn't matter how far they get into the playoffs, um, to me, them making it is like the biggest success. Do you, Would you agree with that? I, I think they're playing with house money. So, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, anything they do from here is gravy. And they're not, they weren't expected to get here. They're not expected to beat Edmonton, who is going to be their first-round opponent. Not an easy matchup. Uh, it, we're going to see exactly how good Jonathan Quick is because he's facing uh, one of the best offensive teams in the NHL in that first round. But sometimes, you know, when you have a team with experienced goaltending, some veteran leaders, and some young guys who don't know they're not supposed to win, that's sort of the right ingredients for a, a long run. When you got nothing to lose, sometimes it all falls into place. Absolutely. And I think, you know, you said it really well. And this, 
is a great chance for those young guys to dip their toes in the water and be like, okay, so this is what I learned this year in the postseason. And they can go back, you know, next year, whenever they make the postseason again and say, this is where we need to improve. This is what, you know, it's a learning curve. And Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, it's good to see that some of these teams that are in that rebuild phase are actually successful with it. No question. And, you know, getting that playoff experience, especially for some of these younger players, even if they go four games and out, even if they're swept, uh, it's good to get that experience. And I always think back to something Wayne Gretzky said after the Oilers lost to the Islanders in the 1983 Stanley Cup final. And he said he went past the Islanders locker room, thought he'd see the team excited and celebrating, and they were just exhausted. That the Islanders, in order to win that fourth straight cup, they left everything out there on the ice. They had nothing left in the tank. And that made him realize, if I want to win a championship, this is what I have to do. Getting that experience, seeing what it takes to win in the playoffs, even if you don't win the first time around, there is value to that for these young players on the LA Kings. That is honestly, I I hadn't heard that story before. So that's, it's a nice little anecdote to share. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of those players have heard that a million times from their coaches. And, you know, we say it as fans, like, oh, they have to leave it all on the ice, like no matter what it is, but you know, it, that's really what it takes. And uh, it's all about having all cylinders firing at the right time. And, I think that we can actually talk about that coming up next in terms of someone's pistons not firing potentially in Nashville. But (laughs) before we get ahead of ourselves there, I wanted to talk to you all about HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a delicious meal uh, service that everyone can benefit from. I know I use it to take the stress off myself and especially in the postseason because I don't have time for grocery shopping. And you can customize your favorite dishes with their new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another and upgrading a more for a more luxurious experience and adding protein to a veggie meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals tailored for you. HelloFresh Chefs really know how to diversify their menu with seasonal recipes like salmon limon and pasta primavera. It's not really good. I'm allergic to salmon, so I will not be getting that. Well, you're um, making me hungry, so. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's dinner time. I should do that now. But uh, if you're hungry and want some free meals, you can go to HelloFresh.com today. Uh, HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That is HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and code LockedOn16 for 16 free meals. Oh boy. So we, well, the Flames played the Predators last night and we saw what could be a very exciting uh, playoff matchup. I would give anything for a seven game series of that. It was a very high energy competitive game with a lot, uh, you know, a lot of players leaving everything out there, even if it was game (laughs) 79 of the season. Uh, Milan Lucic had some big hits and uh, so did, so did Nashville. But I think the biggest hit that they took was losing, uh, UC Soros to a lower body injury. Um, right now, he there wasn't an update after the game, but this morning uh, they came out and said that he will be sitting for the last two games of the regular season and will go from there. That's almost a week's rest. What do you what do you take away from that, Gil? Uh, well, I take away from it that they have no proven backups behind him right now. And it would be a big blow to Nashville's chances of, of going on a playoff run of any kind if they don't have Soros in goal. So uh, 
th this is important, and we all know how important goaltending is in the postseason. If you don't have a hot goalie, it's almost impossible to go on a deep playoff run. And Nashville is a team that needs Saros out there. And uh, if he's not ready, that could be big time trouble for the Preds. Yeah, I think that, you know, Roman Yossi can only do so much defending <laughs> and producing. I don't think that uh, having him risk his life in front of, I think it's Connor Ingram, who's their backup. And I don't really think that that's going to be a recipe for success in any way. Um, and I think a lot of people are saying this is why you don't have your big players start these last you know four to five games of the regular season and i mean soros already has had a heavy workload he started 67 games this year which uh has got to be at or near the top of the league so you know you already had a concern maybe he's being overworked maybe uh if he's okay to start the playoffs giving him a week off right now might be the best thing for him yeah, like this really could be uh, one of those blessing in disguise situations. But there have just been so many incidences where players do suffer season-ending injuries. And uh, I know last year the Flames weren't in the playoffs, but uh, Dylan Dubé had a chance to go to Worlds for uh, Canada. And unfortunately, his last game second to last game against Vancouver, he ended up sustaining a concussion. And so he couldn't go and potentially win that gold medal. So, you know, I think all of all things considered, maybe we start sitting these bigger stars and maybe the people who are a little bit more beneficial to the team, because what, what's the worst that could happen? You go out and lose a few games if you've already clinched your spot, like, I don't really, I don't know. It just doesn't, it makes me feel bad for the guys who, you know, especially like a very competitive and I wouldn't say Stanley cup favorites by any means, but a team that is truly looking to go on a tear like Nashville. Yeah. And I mean, I look at what's happened over the past week and I know this is an Eastern conference team, but the Washington Capitals yep. sat Alex Ovechkin. He didn't play last night and probably won't play on Thursday either. Why play him at this point? Exactly. Why the, do it? What you lose potentially is so much more than what you could gain. And, you know, you have to look at it this way from the Capitals perspective. You'll go on a longer playoff run with a healthy Alex Ovechkin against a tougher opponent in the first round than you would without him against an easier opponent in the first round. Yeah. And I think a lot of teams really have to sort of take that example and run with it because, you know what, you could finish fourth place in your division, and if you go to the conference final or to the Stanley Cup final or even win the Cup, everyone's going to just remember you were the best team that year. You you right. did great. But if you came in first place and went four and out, everyone's going to say, what a disappointing year it was. Have your best players ready for the playoffs. Exactly. And – there, there have just been so many instances of that, and I don't like it. It just it makes me feel very bad. <laughs> but there, there's no reason why you can't call people up from your AHL affiliate and say, now's your time to shine. Because yeah, especially if you've got players. some younger players. I mean, right. let them get their feet wet in the NHL. Let them have a game or two when there is very little pressure on and, and they can just – get used to the faster pace of the game, the bigger players, uh, the fact that they'll have less time and space to operate in the NHL than they do in the AHL or in juniors. Uh, it's a learning experience. And even just a game or two can help a player's development before they go to training camp next year. Exactly. And again, it comes back to what we were talking about earlier with the Kings. It's all about experience and having this sort of, wiggle room where there's no like if you mess up and lose in the first round and you're the kings okay we're you're just happy to be there and then these you know younger guys that are coming up from the ahl to you know benefit the stars resting uh they, they have nothing to lose either they're just you know happy to be there put on a show maybe in front of the coach and give it give it what they got 
Yeah, and and you get the debut over with. Their parents come in, hopefully, to to see it. it you know, you get some of the uh, butterflies out, and then they come into training camp next year and say, "Hey, I've been there. I've done this. We go from here." Exactly, and it's a big stepping stone for them. And I see this as an equal, you know, benefit to both sides. And um, there is a lot, a lot of teams that could benefit from maybe sitting some stars I don't know I just again it just makes me feel really oh like I don't want to see anyone get hurt no we never do and even if you look at it selfishly from a fan perspective the uh, playoffs is when you have the best caliber of hockey and I want to see the best players on the ice that's exactly. you know as right. a fan and that's what I want to do to spend all this money to right. go to a game I don't I don't want to see a fourth liner like playing up on the second line because someone's hurt. I want to see the product that I was almost promised when I spent all that money. But absolutely. Speaking of spending a lot of money, we are going to spend the last segment of this show talking about the Vegas Golden Knights because it would not be a Western Conference Wednesday if we did not dunk on them. Uh, with guests or no guests. We're just here to talk about them. And Gil, you have something you want to talk to us about, I believe. Yeah, uh, I would like to talk to you all about Built Bar. Have you tried the Puffs? Well, if you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And like all Built Bars, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite. They've got incredible flavors like yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow. I love the banana cream pie. These are so good. They're going to be your new favorite. And look, most Built Bars contain just 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, four net carbs, but they pack 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every time. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. So I'm pulling up some stats uh, for Vegas, and they have to win their next two games in order to make the playoffs. Um their first matchup is against the Chicago Blackhawks, which, I mean, could be a freebie. But their <laughs> second opponent is the red-hot St. Louis Blues. Yeah, and both of those games are on the road, too, which yeah. doesn't make it easier for the Golden Knights. And, uh, you know, the question is, will the Blues need the game? They may need it to determine home ice advantage in the first round. Uh or they may be resting some of their guys if it doesn't matter by that point. So, you know, it's always hit and miss uh, as to how teams are going to play their last few games of the season. But it's a tall order right now for Vegas. Their playoff hopes, which looked so bright a few months ago, looking very iffy right now. I am very surprised by that based on, you know, the moves that they made. Um, you know, signing or trading for Jack Eichel. They really went all in. And for that to kind of fall flat, um, I think he had zero points, like through uh, four really important games last week. And that just doesn't feel like a Jack Eichel performance. But then you also have to remember he's coming back from an quote unquote experimental surgery mm -hmm. obviously it's worked out he's okay but I just I don't know and especially with Robin Leonard being out um, and undergoing that season ending surgery I would guess that Vegas doesn't really have high hopes yeah losing Laner is is a big blow for this team even though he's not having his typical A-plus kind of a season. 
And yeah, it's been a real disappointment for Vegas. You know, like you were saying, they seem to have everything locked up. Not not locked up, but they seem to be in a very good position uh, a couple of months ago. And they went all in and and did all the right things. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. And even with Eichel, you think about this. He's got 22 points in 32 games, which is not great, but not deplorable statistically. But after coming back from the surgery and the long-term injury, you got to figure it's going to take him some time before he gets back to 100% health. And, uh, you know, a disappointing finish to the season unless a miracle happens and Vegas manages to pull a rabbit out of a hat, as they say. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm okay with them missing the playoffs um, simply because, I, number one, I do not want the Flames to play them. Uh, number two, I think – it's I'm selfish and um, I think it would bring hockey Twitter together and seeing them kind of uh, miss their first playoff berth since they've uh, existed as a team in the league. So I um, I'm very interested to see how these next two games go for them. But then you also have to look at that game against St. Louis if they start Bennington, does that mean they are starting oh, I, Huso? I think his name is. I'm yeah, linking. Yeah. But are they starting him in the playoffs or vice versa? I think that's another fun goaltending controversy <clears throat> there. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, where they go. And, you know, look, statistically, uh, Yuso has been better significantly than Bennington, but Bennington has the experience in the playoffs. He's won a Stanley Cup. Uh, do you go with Vili Yuso, who has a goals against average, more than a half a goal a game better than Bennington, who has a save percentage that's 921 to Bennington's 901? Uh, the win-loss record, I mean, they play better in front of Yuso. This is not an easy decision for the St. Louis Blues and they've got a tough series against Minnesota. I think those may be the two most evenly ranked teams uh, as far as an opening round playoff series goes. They have identical 109-point records, uh, nice rivalry. I mean, that's going to be a heck of a series. Wh which direction would you go if you were coaching the St. Louis Blues? I am benching Bennington. I, I would too. I just I don't have any faith in him. Uh, you know, I think 2019, even though I'm a Boston fan, I think that I, I can say this unbiasedly or, you know, without any sort of uh, judgment. But I just I think that he got lucky in his performance. And then St. Louis put all of their eggs in one basket with him, uh, not really considering that it was just like a one time experience. <laughs> Yeah. Now I have, I had one more question about something yeah. you said before. Why wouldn't you want the flames to face Vegas in the first round of the playoffs? There's something about Vegas that they just do not play well in Vegas. Um, it's not even this year. They just, they didn't play very well. Uh, they ended up shutting them out at um, in Calgary, like six to nothing, but then they went to Vegas earlier this month and lost like six to two or six to three. And it just was not a fun game. Um, they've no, I don't think they've ever won at uh, the TNT arena. So I would just know. <laughs> not for me. Is, is there something about the way the teams match up that you think causes that problem or. I think I, that's a really good question. Cause I truly don't know. I just think that they cause the flames to kind of like, collapse it on themselves if you will I think that they just kind of um I think it could be different with um the goaltending situation if things were to happen because um obviously the Flames have Jacob Markstrom who's just you know an outstanding goaltender and then throwing in I don't even know Vegas's backup goaltender so that, that's really bad I don't but, know if Vegas knows Vegas is yeah goaltenders. And I just really, um, I don't know. I just, I just think it's like this weird confidence thing. Um, 
and I want them to have a higher, uh, more competitive team come like the first round. I think that the Flames would be a little um, too lucky if they didn't have a highly competitive matchup. Fair enough. Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Is there anything else you wanted to touch upon before we wrap up our Western Conference Wednesday? No, just uh, thank you so much for having me on. And it's been great fun talking with you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And uh, where can our listeners find you? Uh, They could find me. uh, Well, the podcast is Locked On Islanders. I also do the Monday show here on Locked On NHL. Uh, And on Twitter, it's at Locked On Isles for the podcast and at Ice Wars NYR VSNYI to follow me. And how about you? Thank you, Gil. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. And you can find the show uh, Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure you're tuning in to Locked On NHL for the rest of the week for all of their fantastic playoff coverage. And we will catch you next week on Western Conference Wednesday.